it's the info. It's the man with the info. Whatever you want to know, come join the man with the info show. It's the info. It's the man with the info. Whatever you want to know, come join the man with the info show. It's the info. It's the info. Whatever you want to know, come join the man with the info show. It's the info. We got the info. Whatever you want to know, come join the man with the info show. It's the info man. You can call him information. Info man. Kicking knowledge all over this nation. Win, lose, or draw. You can bring your hate team. But if you want to win, please don't bring your debate team. We talking Japanese shogun. Aztecs, old mix, and African dogun. information man and I just want to say right here that brother professor dr. James small I'm telling you he's the truth I'm telling you professor James smalls is the truth enjoy the video this is information man peace and all the rest of the world all of the islands in the Pacific, mm -hmm. all of Australia, all of India, mm -hmm. all of even Europe was mm -hmm. black. Mm -hmm. um, how are we going to pretend we didn't populate the Americas? Mm -hmm. It's easier to get from West Africa to Brazil than it is to get from West Africa to Australia. Mm. You know? That's right. So we need to make common sense. Were they Africans in this country before Christopher Columbus? 1492 is what, 600 years ago or 500 years ago? That's nothing in the scale mm -hmm. of time. Mm -hmm. Even the Mali civilization is saying they sent hundreds of ships over here mm. that never came back. Mm. We know there was a, an, an incident about two months ago on the news. Six white men in a damn rowboat leaving the Grand Canary Islands over the coast of Africa, rode their way to America in three weeks. Mm -hmm. All right? We know there have been other experiments where people have used even the papyrus boat right. and came from Africa to America. So please, I, we used to come over here on vacation. I want to I wanna even put some, some, some uh, add some information into some of what he said because mm -hmm. you might hear what he said and not know how to do some more research on what right. he said. Thank when you. he talked about the Mali Empire, you have to look at the story of Abu Bakr. Yes. And you look at how he ascends to the throne. Please, for those of you who want to know more about how Africans might have made successful journeys to the United States, look at how he ascends to the throne. We have several rulers. His, uh, his predecessor says he's on the throne. And he says, I don't want to be on the throne anymore. I want to explore the world. Mm -hmm. And so he says he's going off and he leaves. This, this is in our record, mm -hmm. right? Yes. There are those that believe that, his, that he was uh, attempting to come here. And so it is, I, I often say often that um, if people are anywhere, it's because Africans went there. Right. And it is um, in African oral history, mm -hmm. the coming back and forth. That's right. I remember the first time I went to Takarati, which is in the western region of Ghana, and I walked into the Atlantic Hotel, the hotel that was built by Kwame Nkrumah, mm. and there was a mural on the wall of the lobby of the hotel. 20 feet by 20 feet mm. of Africans landing on the shores of America pre-Columbus trading with the Asiatic. Where is this? Where is this that you saw that? Takarati. Woo. It was in 1980 when I went to that hotel in Ghana. Mm. So to the African, that's a normal. Yes. Norm. They think that is normal. When Christopher Columbus came here, he wrote about the black folks he met here. yes he takes his second voyage he's dropping a lot of stuff y'all i'm trying to just be i'm trying to be the attendant here and, and slip some stuff in so you could do your further research mm -hmm. he takes it on his first voyage the native people here tell him that they saw the black men with spears tipped with gold mm -hmm. and so he says he's taking his second voyage so that he can find them yes. he was familiar with the african so right. And his brother, Christopher Columbus' brother, mm -hmm. said that the guides that he had in South, South America were Ethiopians. Mm. Verrazano, when he came into New York, 
said he met these Ethiopians because mm-hmm. Ethiopian was the operative European word for black or African. That's right. Days. The burnt face. Yes. Ethiopian. And so, but notwithstanding that, anthropology and archaeology on the Americas, just go do your research. The, na- the people you call them the Native American, the Indian, the Asiatic, has mm-hmm. only been here a little bit more than 10,000 years. Mm-hmm. They warred against us who had come here 200,000 years before mm. them. Mm. Okay. And so those of us who came, if you go to, I forgot my little brother's name. He wrote this book on Mexico. He just called me last week. He just got out of college. But I'll, you can mm. get this on that. I'm going to give you his name. And um, he was in the Nation of Islam. And he was on a visit in Belize. And he met this brother that told him, you ought to come on down to southern Mexico and meet some of the black folks. Then mm-hmm. he said, the black folks down there? So he went down to southern Mexico and he wrote a little pamphlet on it. Then he expanded the book a few years later mm-hmm. uh, on the blacks in Mexico. And the elders there told him, there's two blacks here. The ones who came on the boat, meaning those who came doing slavery, and the ones who came before the boat. Mm-hmm. Okay? So you're talking about the Almax, mm-hmm. the... the, the um, Oh, goodness. But those who we see built all the pyramids, they, they, mm-hmm. all, if you look on the paintings, they're black. Mm-hmm. They don't try to hide it. Mm-hmm. White folks have been in there trying to whitewash a bunch of stuff. Mm-hmm. But the most significant ones of the priests wearing the leopard skin, mm-hmm. just like they did in Kemet, um, on, on, on the, the design of the pyramids, on, on, on the, even the opening of the mouth too that's used in the judgment scenes in Kemet. You see, you see it, it in the all, in, amongst in the, the all max. Max. Yes. <laughs> He's making so, me feel like I so, need to go get some artifacts from around the house to show the family something. Yes. So we, we, we know that Africans populated the world. We were in New Guinea. Mm-hmm. We were in Australia. Mm-hmm. We were in Cambodia. Mm-hmm. We were in Thailand. We were in China. Mm-hmm. We were the I knew people of Japan. We were in India. Uh, I'm married to a black woman from India. Okay. Who, who, whose family is from southern India, and their people still live there. And these are the black peoples. We know that we populated all of the islands of the Indian Ocean. And so we populated as well Central and South America. Black people went everywhere. Our genesis is Africa. So this foolishness I'm seeing on, on the Internet with people who haven't done any research, have not presented any facts, talking about we are not Africans. We 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 are, we are aborigines. All aborigines mean is the original population in that particular land. We are aborigines of Europe. Well, they're saying that we are also Cherokee. They fathers Cherokee, and you know. And then most of the Cherokee time, Cherokee was one of the biggest enemy. I'm part Cherokee. Oh, say that again. I just five years ago we did our family reunion on the Cherokee reservation in the mountains of North Carolina. That's my family. Much of the Cherokee Nation, it was only a small portion of the Cherokee Nation that even had any kind of positive relationship with black folks. Mm. Most of them worked with the white folks against black folks. Mm. Cherokee has been one of the most European-focused Native American nations in this hemisphere. <laughs> and Anybody can have that. There, um, I have people who are from the so-called Cherokee Nation. Much of what is called the Cherokee Nation today is a compilation of about 50 other nations from the southern part of the United States who the white man dumped together and called Cherokee. But there was a Cherokee Nation. And most of, if you study history of the Americas, you'll find that the Cherokee Nation allied more often with the white man than with the black man. The people who allied with us was the Creek, the Mm -hmm. Red Tail Creek. Because a large part of the Creek Nation, which made up Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, that nation, a large part of them sided with the white men and fought wars of genocide against us. But the Red Tail Creek sided with us and lived with us and amalgamated with us to become with us the Seminole Nation. Mm. And so we need to study history and not play with history so we can get an understanding of what went on here. Go back and read Leron Bennett's book, The Shaping of Black America. Mm. He has a chapter in there called The Red and the Black. And he deals with this to some extent. Even read our brother David Hotep's new research. Yes. Read Ivan Van Sertima's research. And then look at the bibliographies they use in order to expand your teaching. This silly thing of trying to deny Africa is, is going right back to the same old Judeo-Christian Islamic right. self-hatred mm. that we try to justify 
and now we're going to try to play race as a way of justifying our self-hatred. So, so let's populate the world. Mm-hmm. They even hear us say that Africans who were brought here against their will escaped and spent time with Native peoples, mm-hmm. lived in their land. No, let's not call the Asiatic Nativist people. Let's stop that. That's a mistake we mm. make, and that's part of the conflict. The Asiatics are immigrants that came in, a warring immigrant that mm. came in, 10,000 or so years ago mm-hmm. and warred upon the African immigrants that had preceded them here. See the, so but what the, makes the, them native? The challenge that I'm trying to, to give to folks who haven't studied this as, as, as in-depthly is I want them to understand time periods okay. and then understand how, a, how two brothers who are sitting on the couch, an elder and a, a, a student, could sit here and say that Africans were here before Columbus and then still say when you try to say that you're not an African, there's a problem. Because I think that people People aren't always able to understand that we're talking about something a little bit more complex. Right. So that even in the it's chat the room, biscuits being, you know, if the cat have kittens in an oven, it doesn't become biscuits. <laughs> Malcolm, that's Malcolm one of my favorite made stuff. Yes, he did. 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 So we're but, sitting but, here wondering whether t- we should go to Africa. Well, the Chinese is there moving the riches out of Africa. We're sitting here wondering whether we should go to Africa. The Japanese is there exploiting and moving the wealth out of Africa. We trying to figure out whether Africa is important. The American corporations are there extracting the gold, the diamond, the cobalt, the manganese, and the wealth out of Africa. No. We need to, Malcolm said, we didn't lose our name. What he said, he didn't lose your, your name. You lost your mind. Um, we've lost our mind. Africa is the richest place on earth. It is one of the most underdeveloped pieces of real estate on the planet. You want to create a new create nation. That new nation. Help them create that new world where your grandkids and great grandkids can be born and grow up free. Why stay here just to complain about Jim Crow? should be treated like God's mother, and that all men should be treated like God, and that all children should be treated like the child of the God. Imagine what the world would be like if every man respected every woman like she was the mother of God, and every woman respected every man like he was God. And every man and every woman respected every child like that child was the child of God. You wouldn't even need laws. You wouldn't need police. You wouldn't need government. You wouldn't need all this foolishness that you must only have when morality and ethics and laws have broken down. When people have laws to govern them, ethics and morals have lost their way in governing them. We must become the mind of our ancestors again. We must become free again. We must become the essence and the divine of nature and the cosmology again. Then we'll understand ancestral voices will not only be speaking through us, not only be speaking to us, but will be speaking as us. Um, or our forces of nature, our powers that exist in nature and in all the plants and elements and animals of nature. But these forces also exist in each human being. They also exist in the greater cosmos. They also exist in every cell in the human body. They also exist in each organ in the human body. They also exist as a process in each system in the human body. The history of white America, the history of white Europe, have been about destroying what you see out there. Destroying the black family. If you go back as far as you can go in history, they're cutting out our testicles. They're raping our women. They're killing off the men. Even go back to the Bible. No disrespect to the Hebrew Israelites, but coming out in the book of Exodus, you'll say, kill all the women that have been with men and take the virgins unto yourself and watch. And so, Genocide against the black family has always been the order of the day. And you got to understand that when these things we read in these books, let's read well. Read well. There's hardly a book written where there isn't something worth using for your betterment. But be careful to read the things that is of no use to you right where you find them. And take those things that will be good for you and carry yourself forward.
So when we say African, and the word African, that, that um, ka, you know, from Africa, Afri was the Moorish people that lived in an area called Tunisia, Algeria, just about that area. They had a term for their clans, Afri. The area that became Carthage, where the Romans settled. They called themselves Afri. The word probably simply means living beings or human beings. That's all they were saying. When the whites came, the Romans, and they invaded that area, and they saw the Afri, so the car is their acronym for land, so they went to Afri land. They went to Afri land where the Moors lived. Of course, they didn't use the word Moor, that's the English rendition, plus the word Morush. Morush. They went to Afri land where the Morush lived, the blacks lived. We're being programmed every day TV, newspapers, radios, music, with his knowledge arrangement. He has arranged knowledge in a way, even when you think you're drinking something good for you, it ain't good for you. you know? So we have to find out how we're going to arrange this knowledge. You know, what's good and what's bad. You know what I'm saying? We we have to determine that. Right now, many times, even when we're trying to be conscious, we still reckoning good and bad based on his ethical, moral interpretation of what's good and what's bad. What is my relationship to a bumblebee? You know what I'm saying? What is my relationship to a blade of grass? What is my relationship to the wind? And tomorrow I'm going to go on some of that in terms of traditional African religion, why they have these symbols that represent forces of nature. You talk about Yamaja and the Yoruba, you're talking about the big waters. You're talking about Olokun, you're talking about the depth of the waters. You're talking about Oya, you're talking about the wind. You're talking about Shango, you're talking about the thunderbolt and the lightning, but you're talking about forces of energy. So all of the things that we call deities, Orishas, or Busum, Loas, represented forces in nature. But not just forces in nature external to us, it also represents forces of nature internal to us. And how do you make the reckoning of the relationship between what's in nature and what's in you? Because we are, we are composite of all of nature. Whatever nature is, we that too. And so we talked, I'm just going to look quickly at a little graph that I picked up off the line. It's called Racial Disparity Between the U.S. and the Incarceration Population. So we see that white folks in the, in the population is close to 65%. But in incarceration, they are only about 30%. Black folks, who's less than 25%, in incarceration, we are nearly 50%. And so, the criminalization of the black race, we need to take very seriously. And there's a good book on the subject. And it's called The Criminalization of a Race by a sister who's an ancestor named Shashi McIntyre. So this book should be a must gun. This is her dissertation, but if you, anybody knows Shashi, she worked with Dr. Jeffries, Dr. Clark, Dr. Ben, she was one of the baddest scholars out here. And Dr. McIntyre was Native American and African from East Coast America, who never let anybody push against her to what we understand clearly to be the Moorish American tradition and her African tradition. And she was one of the most fantastic of teachers. There's another good book on the subject that says, Why are so many black men in prison? It's worth studying to understand how this war is being fought against us. If the war is the war is against the youth. No, the war is against the race. The youth just happened to be the target on that occasion. But the youth is now separate from this race. Okay. The war is against the race. And they think if we can knock out one leg, we can cripple the whole body. So we have to understand that clearly. The first school is in the home, but we should make sure we do it in our home. That means our history should be taught in our home. And above all the things, make sure that no child walk out of your home without having a math foundation undergirding whatever else they learn. Race of defendants approved for federal death penalty prosecution. We saw who commit the crimes, but yet 50% of the people on death row are black folks. 25% of the crime committers, white folks, are there. So, you know, I'm, I study the European history a lot, and the, the, way, the things I'm talking about about traditional religion is going to be from the European perspective. 
There's no such thing as a Yoruba religion, though. There's a Yoruba people that live in Nigeria. They simply practice an African spiritual system. But we misnormally call the African spiritual system Yoruba religion, but that's really a misnormal. Okay. And anybody want to agree with, disagree with me? I'm like, we can discuss it. But the Yoruba is the people. They practice the same religion all other Africans practice. And that's the religion of the laws of nature. The religion of the laws of the cosmos. The religion of our relationship to the laws of nature and the cosmos. And their relationship to us. That thing that Jesus went to and represent should be the experience of every man coming into consciousness. When you come into consciousness, you've become what they call God. But not what people, what people are calling consciousness today is you have a certain amount of information. You read two books, you watch a video, and then they said, I'm the conscious community, and most of them are as dead as someone in the cemetery. That's not the conscious community. This is the conscious community right here. The conscious community is not very big. It's a very small group of people trying to wake up the other people so that this conscious community could expand. But the enemy will play a trick on you. It'll make you think you're awake when you're fast asleep. And I think, um, I remember hearing a, a, a song a brother in um, the Bahamas sang, and it was called Being Wide Awake in a Dream. And a lot of us are wide awake in a dream, but we're really still as asleep, but we think and we're dreaming that we're awake. And we're trying to convince people that we are awake when we're really sleeping. Our ancestors did not leave us empty-handed. All the information we need, they've left it for us. They've left it for us. In the form of our traditional system, the Dogon, the Akan, the Kemetic system that we see all over the Nile Valley, they've left the wisdom for us. We have to study that wisdom. When we lived in the South, those root women and those root men who the community were rejecting, they were our herbalists and our healers who kept the wisdom with us even though we were over here. They were using the church because that's all they had. But they were the village chiefs and they maintained the system. Today, something else has happened with the black church. But if you go back into the 1800s, the turn of the century, you were basically talking about the African village and the African chief and you were talking about extended families and how it gets structured and how it get organized as a clan with their totems. But we have to first know what of Africa have we kept? And you're not going to know that until you start studying what Africa is. But the white man have turned it into these other perversions and got you worshiping up him as the image of God. He's actually made God in his image. And then got you worship up his image. But if you just took the 12 tribes of the Old Testament and look up the etymology of the name of each tribe, took the twelve, the disciples of Christ and ethnologically studied them, you talk about qualities and attributes to be developed in the human personality that you can find as forces in nature already. That's what it's about. Y'all understand me? Did y'all understand that? Y'all something like that? Y'all really get it? And for the Muslim brothers, they call it the 99 pearls of faith. But most people with religion, they try to incarcerate you. They're not trying to liberate you. Alright? So you got to get with that. I want to be free to be God. I don't want to be imprisoned by God. <laughs> and this is one of our beautiful brothers, Cardi Wilson. He said, if a race has no history, if it has no worthwhile tradition, it becomes a negligible fact in the thought of the world and it stands in danger of being exterminated. And aren't we there? If you don't think we are, just look at what happened in Liberia, Sierra Leone, and Guinea over the last year with the Seabow with them. Dr. Clay Noble, one of our great scholars from up in Oakland, who just came out with a new book. Y'all gotta get it. It's called The Island of Mimi. The Island of Mimi, I'll tell you what Mimi is later. A true study of history allows one to tie bits and pieces of their scattered historical information together. This would allow us to develop foresight, create goals for our future, insight, know our present condition, hindsight, learn from our past. Everybody here has always been here. There's never been a time in time 
when the spirit that occupies these bodies wasn't in existence. What Wade is calling the mimis is the memory of the spirit. When you remember when you were here the last time, that's when you're there. That's when they call you an Arisha. That's when they call you a God. Because you remember that I always was. Freedom is when you arrive and you know that you're a God having a human experience called you. And it's so simple to understand. If there's something called God, omnipotent, omnipresent, omnipotent, and supreme, it means nothing else can occupy any space anywhere else except it. It is the only thing that is. So then what is all the rest of us? Be this expression of aspect of that, you know. But you have to become conscious of that, that if I'm an expression of an aspect of the thing we call the divine, what aspect of it am I? That's what the search detail goes into. That's when people say, oh, I'm going to tell you who your Loa is, or I'm going to tell you who your Orisha is, or I'm going to tell you who your Obusum is, or I'm going to tell you who your Netta is. Yes, those forces, all of us have got all the forces in us. Every force in any part of nature or the cosmos is in all of us. But there's one usually more dominant than all others. And sometimes if you're strong and you're healthy and you're studying and you're raising your consciousness and you're eating well and you're doing exercises and you're living out that, then you can raise up more than one of those forces in you. And then you become a force yourself in a way people may not understand it. They just know this person can do this, he can do that because you've brought those forces alive and you've cultivated them. You know them and you cultivate them. But you have to realize that such a phenomena exists. The way the thoughts get arranged in your mind is there's such a thing. Some people make us believe that there's a man called God. I mean, it's the most foolish thing. When I was a child, it sounded like a real thing. But when you get knowledge, you realize that's the most foolish idea anybody can come up with. And why would anybody believe that? But people believe it because they've been made afraid of this thing the called death. It's the man with the info. Whatever you want to know, come join the man with the info show. It's the info. It's the man with the info. Whatever you want to know, come join the man with the info show. It's the info. It's the info. Whatever you want to know, come join the man with the info show. It's the info. We got the info. Whatever you want to know, come join the man with the info show. It's the info man. You can call him information. Info man. Kicking knowledge all over this nation. Win, lose, or draw. You can bring your hate team. But if you want to win, please don't bring your debate team. We talking Japanese shogun. Aztecs, old mix, and African dogun.